Redstone torch keys. Seems like everyone has a video on them. So why am I here making another one? Well, because I have something brand new. So what is a redstone torch key? Well, a redstone torch key is a hidden input device whereby if you put a redstone torch on a certain block, it'll cause a redstone update through a circuit and typically break the torch as well as part of it. So these two are two designs that I managed to find on the internet uh, and they're pretty quick, they're good. What I did here is I took these two designs, these two simple designs, made them one wide tileable just for the fun of it. Obviously you'd alternate rails and you can see they work pretty much the same. Making it one wide tileable does make it a little slower. You can see the difference with those two and that's just because the observers cause more delay than redstone dust does. But these two, the uh, wall to floor, wall to ceiling, still wasn't what I was looking for. I needed something that was flush with the floor and I went ahead and made a flush with the wall, flush with the ceiling design as well, but I needed something that was flush with the floor. And I managed to find an Exuma tutorial from about four years ago that same idea as this, but uh, his was a lot bigger because that video predated observers. So I took it, redesigned it, made it two by two by, call this four if you want to include that block, and yeah, works pretty quick. Still, however, wasn't what I was looking for. I wanted something where you could toggle it. So it'd go down, and then next time you place the torch on, it would come up. So a redstone torch key toggle. And the idea with that is, or my idea with it, is if you took a chest and had a chest down here and then maybe some stairs, you could hide away all your valuables and then placing the torch on a certain block gets you them back. So that's the idea with that there. And this is, again, for if you want to include that block, you could call it three in retract mode, three by two by two. And so I made this, went ahead and made a flush with the wall version and a flush with the ceiling version, which uh, you gotta put, because you can't put the torch on the bottom of the block, you can put it on the side, or just a block update detector where you break the block and it pulls back and sets off the TNT or whatever place on the block back resets it. So there's these, the toggle ones. There's also pulse versions of all of these. You can see the uh, torch comes back, or if uh, we put that, just break the block and place the block, we still get the pulse out. So yeah, flush with the wall, flush with the floor, flush with the ceiling, all within this one here is has a redstone block down here, so this is maybe a 3 by 2 by 4 but all within the 2 by 2 by 4 area. All super compact, all super quick, all super easy. Let's get to the tutorial. Alright, so we'll start with the floor. We're going to have the block that we will put our torch on. Come down by a couple. Sticky piston here observers on the bottom of it to see when that torch or when that piston moves up to here if we put a block here another sticky piston facing down right there and then we can put in our redstone blocks like that and so the way the torch key works is this piston thinks it's powered but it's not so when you give it an update like a redstone update it'll retract and think it's still not powered but this dot is actually powering it because we moved this block out of the way so this piston's powered thinks it's not so we give it another update it extends this block comes redirects this redstone so this piston isn't powered anymore and so that's the uh the same idea with all of them or how the redstone torch updater works now if we come here remove this block put a piece of redstone dust and we're going to reposition this block to here and just give it an update. 
just that simple change from a block to redstone dust right there turns it into our pulse. So that turns it from the toggle mode, which should be this one, to a pulse mode. So super easy. Now if we come up here and put our block there, couple back, put our piston, and again we're gonna put redstone there. This is where our other redstone block will be. Go up by a couple, put our other sticky piston going down. This is what we'll use to redirect it. And we're gonna observe that block moving and bring it over to here. And so we can close this in to make it flush with the wall. And you can see we're uh, all the way back to here. So. You can see again the redirection of the redstone is what changes this piston from powered to not but doesn't update the piston. So super easy there. In order to make it uh, pulse we're actually going to make it a little simpler. Less resources. We're going to come here. We're going to have a piston going to the side like so and again just observe that and put it there. So pulse this time what we're doing is we're using this piston here to update this piston after the redstone dust is redirected. Here we're using the redstone dust to update and power this uh, this piston after the extension is done. So with the block, with just a block there, it doesn't update the piston. With the redstone dust, the redstone dust updates the piston. It says, oh, I need to extend, and so it does so. Now the ceiling one is exactly the same as the one on the ground, just the piston is rotated 180 degrees. So exact same setup here. We're going to have our block here. Another block here, redstone, but this time we don't need observers down here, so we're just going to put an observer there, up into a block with a sticky piston going down. And I'm going to break that, put that there, and give this guy an update. So yeah. There you go. That's all that that is. And for the top, same as the bottom, redstone dust will change it there. All right, so that's everything there. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more redstone-related things. And I will catch you guys next time.